Okay. Uh, so I'm uh, Robert Gusle from uh, Unionet, the Norwegian engine operator, and I am the NOC manager at Unionet and a network engineer. Uh, a little bit about the uh, Unionet network infrastructure. Uh, we also operate on an uh, IRU deal that uh, been going on for about I think six or seven years. So we have a right of use uh, with one of the major, one of the two major Norwegian telco providers. Um, that also allows us to upgrade the capacity when the when the technology is there. So we just pay for the the end equipment and we don't pay anymore for for the for the circuits. Um, the telco provider are running the DWM equipment for us, and they are also servicing the fiber infrastructure. Uh, we part own some local fiber infrastructure, and we participate in fiber projects to facilitate new fiber, but we like to pull out and just keep one or two fibers for our own needs, and then let the other parties have their own fiber. Uh, so we run uh, one, two and a half, and ten gigabit network. Um, as uh, Stefan said, we have had uh, some bad uh, experiences with uh, the Norwegian weather and the topology. So uh, we have had two main fiber infrastructures going up towards the northern part of Norway, and we have uh, a recent addition now with a third part path through Sweden that's been testing these days so we have a 10 gigabit uh, light path through Sunet uh, between Narvik and Stockholm being uh, tested as we speak. Uh, we have uh, 40 universities and university colleges as our main customers and around 70 POPs, 200 customer institutions and the end users of course are quite a few, but uh, we mainly uh, hear from the IT department of the university colleges and, uh, and the IT people there. Uh, the network is quite long, as you can imagine. The, um, the distance, I think, uh, is about half the distance of uh, around the globe at the equator. That's the, the uh, coast of, of Norway. Uh, we have 8,000 kilometers of installed fiber parts. Um, we still have uh, some challenges with the low capacity on the areas where uh, there are local monopolies. Um, but uh, for, a, for a big part, we have uh, one gigabit and above uh, in a redundant infrastructure. So, uh, we run a hybrid network on top of the, or a lambda network on top of the topology, uh, where we can now deliver one and two and a half and ten gigabit uh, light paths for research purposes. Um, we have uh, an infrastructure that's ready for 40 gigabit, and I think uh, 100 gigabit is on the roadmap. Uh, we mostly have uh, Cisco and Juniper routers, uh, some 150 installed, I think, in the field. Uh, we have quite a high diversity in, in the model. Uh, the DVDM systems are from Nokia Siemens and from Strand mode. And we have some passive CVDM systems on some access fibers. Uh, but all the active uh, DVDM equipment uh, are serviced and run by our telco uh, partners. Uh, the services that we provide, uh, we have a service catalog uh, that's quite extensive. Uh, um, I think we deliver pretty much the same as all the other entrants. Um, we have a, a daughter company that's uh, catering to the, the special needs for the administrative systems, and they have their own NUC, so the Uninet NUC doesn't uh, really bother us up with the, uh, those services. Um, we have a CERT 
observe it uh, that stand alone from from the knock and we have a, a separate internal uh, help desk also. But we yes, the external knock we we troubleshoot the normal internet connectivity on IPv4 and IPv6. We do DNS and host master services, uh, registered services for our customers for the dot .no. uh, We do some uh, central inbound email gray listing and antivirus solutions. Uh, we have some projects with where we have uh, uh, some distributed uh, toolboxes, uh, a 30, I think, uh, measuring beacons that uh, uh, that do uh, multicast connectivity mesh measurements and uh, offer end user capabilities for speed tests for connectivity between different sites in the network. Uh, we have also uh, developed some toolboxes for uh, our customers themselves to do internal network proactive uh, running. Uh, that's running a knob. Uh, that's uh, a big uh, network administration package that NTNU, one of the four universities, have, de have developed. And uh, UNMS is now developing that package. And then we have uh, different tools on those distributed toolboxes also. Um, to manage and monitor the network, uh, our main management tool is our uh, homegrown CMS system. Uh, or inventory system. Uh, we also have uh, uh, we also have some uh, manual and tools uh, like uh, uh, the configuration server, uh, database for network equipment configuration. That's the TFTP server with RCS. Uh, and we also have uh, different servers for configuration management for uh, for systems running CF Engine and Subversion. Uh, but mostly, uh, our CMS system is the main uh, managing tool. And for for monitoring, we mainly use uh, homegrown open source monitoring monitoring tools. Uh, rely heavily on uh, on the Xeno that uh, monitors all the interfaces and has a front end that has uh, a lightweight ticket system capability to ensure the status and uh, follow up of, of events. Um, we have uh, a lot of net network maps uh, that are web based and that our customers have uh, insight into, showing the topology and the and the customer's place in the network and their historic data with uh, outages and, uh, and errors and link load uh, all the way down to the last five minutes. Uh, we use some homegrown tools to do traffic engineering. Uh, the most recent is called PyMetric uh, that helps us to, to simulate what happens if a path or an equipment uh, or something goes wrong in, in the network, or you have to adjust metrics and see what happens. Uh, and we use uh, Hobbit and Moonin for service and server monitoring. And uh, all these are open source and available at the software in the next NO. Uh, we are 24-7, uh, 365 knock. Uh, centralized, located in uh, Trondheim. Uh, that is, we have also agreements with the four major universities that they act as our uh, prolonged arm into the pops uh, in the main locations. Uh, so we actually pay them uh, an amount of money each month for them to have uh, man hours to do stuff for us. And we collaborate closely with them. Um, the NOC operators are also the network engineers. Used to be only network engineers, but now are a fairly good mix of network and systems engineers. 
we currently have about 20 of, of us going in the rotation. People step in, in into the rotation and out of the rotation, depending a little bit on the work workload and the current projects they are participating in. But we need to be about 15 or 20 persons. Uh, we have a technician on duty for outside uh, office hours. Uh, we have two on the day watch and one that's on uh, standby, uh, standby watch and uh, have a, a demand to be able to respond in uh, half an hour or so. So no longer than that to call back or to be able to get on the net and check the status. Um, how do we work with the different kinds of tools? Uh, we, in the service monitor, we connect to the customer database so that we can go from the alarm to the service and see who is using the service. And we can see the, the service descriptions and we can see also now we are integrating the service history into the customer database. That's a bit early in the development, but it's coming in and it's looking to be quite handy. Uh, we collect a lot of uh, uh, system and circuits alarms during the day and we parse it into a daily IRC channel uh, that the operators on the, um, on the NOC can comment on the events and uh, also chat with the, the, the rest of the networking department that tends to be on the same big channel. Um, we have uh, a tailored uh, monitoring view of, uh, of the different uh, things we monitor on, on big screens on, on NOC, of course, as you probably all have. Um, <coughs> what type of user? Well, we have uh, our member institutions that uh, are the university and the university colleges. Some comprehensive schools on the lower level, but not many. Um, of course, we cater to other entrants that we collaborate with, and uh, also the public as a whole use some of our services. Um, so really, we, we try to document who are the, the users of a service in our service catalog. Um, we do very little of SLA, SLA agreements. Uh, we have a best effort SLA uh, that kind of refers to our vendors SLAs, but we don't usually, I don't think we ever have paid out any money. Mm -hmm. And very seldom we pursue a case so far that we also get a penalty from the supplier. But that's uh, mainly because we have a very close relationship with the one supplier that we use now and the and the other main supplier that used to be the largest monop monopolist was uh, the supplier that used to behave quite badly and so we have sort of migrated away from him and now we're just dealing with the good guys. So we keep uh, a good connection with them and we normally don't have to, to enforce SLA uh, agreements with them. Uh, and we have uh, service agreements uh, within Uninet, between uh, the NOC and the service administrative owner that uh, outlays the procedural issues of the service, that uh, who's using the service, what are the contact points, uh, what are the escalation and the troubleshooting steps known, and what are issues like specific service windows or strict conditions. And we have generic service statements for, for the NOC, but that is just sort of saying that we can be reached uh, at that and that number, uh, and we are there to help them and so forth. And, and they're not really giving any value at SLA agreements. Uh, so we have uh, always had the view, or have used to have the view, that we are a membership organization and that we all sort of work together with our customers for, for the best effort. So we, we really haven't sort of let the SLA terminology apply to us as such. But we really see the need, the need to document what responsibilities we have towards 
what customers, that's the, the part or the SLA bit that we have been trying to focus on. Uh, the tools used to communicate, uh, RT is our trouble ticketing tool. Of course, email, Jabber, and so on. Uh, we have a customer web portal where customers can see what information we have or or the administrative contacts for the customer. You ne they need to be logged in and then they can see what services they are uh, not buying but getting from us and what contact information we have from them. And we also send out periodic uh, uh, emails that tells them to log on and check if their customer information is correct. Um, other groups, uh, mostly it's email, instant messaging. Uh, like others, I find that instant messaging is a uh, very unintrusive and quick way to sort of get input from from the different groups in-house. Uh, we coordinate through department leading team meetings. Uh, externally, we mainly it's just phone, email, ticket handling. We do some simple parsing of, of tickets in that we import the Nordinet tickets and uh, the Ventelo tickets into our uh, calendar of planned work. But we need manually to sort of uh, send out warnings about planned work. Uh, we document, uh, of course, the daily, daily resolving of cases. Uh, we have all the event logs, uh, all the syslogs, of course, are, are kept. Uh, we do notification of planned work. Uh, and uh, the NOC persons on duty are responsible of keeping the, the customer information uh, up to date as to what changes have been done that day. So that's an important part of their daily job is to to keep uh, the information correct. And um, the service documentation, uh, that's a bit more uh, difficult. The hands-on and the tips and the how-tos, they are sort of generic and going from years back and to recent, and they are really not all that uh, well administered as, as they should have been. Um, the tools used, we have uh, quite a lot of template information for our, the, the documents that are um, enforced uh, that should be in place, uh, that's in the customer system. And then we use uh, DocuWiki and CBS to create and to edit on the, on the documents. We are trying this year to look into easier editors to, to make it easier to pro produce and maintain the documentation because the, not everyone is familiar with the wiki type of, of working so we sort of want to see if we can produce it a bit easier. Uh, best practice documents, uh, we have uh, some non-specific non to the NOC operations best practice documents already published. Uh, their uh, English versions are available through Terena on the, on the link there. Uh, we really don't have uh, very much best practice documents as such uh, other than that. That's more like the the detailed descriptions of how we do our day-to-day -day work are not that generic and probably not that different from what you do in your own internal documents. So, are there any questions? You said you have uh, 15 to 20 people in rotation. Yes. Uh, from how big pool of people? Well, uh, I guess we are about uh, 40 eligible persons, I would guess, but uh, we tend to be uh, divided into departments and some of them do a lot of research and traveling and working on projects with uh, other communities and 
sort of don't have the time to be uh, present at the NOC uh, so regularly that that they sort of can maintain the awareness about the day-to-day -day job there. So we need to, to use people that can be called, uh, that could be put on the rotation uh, at least a couple of times a month. Other than that, if not, then they'll use too much time to to just uh, figure out what to do in the, at the daily shores on the NOC. So I think we have 20 as, as of today. One more question. Yes. Yes. We show uh, the same information as uh, the tools show up. Uh, we show uh, uh, the last interface event in one part of the screens. We show uh, the sy active system alarms. Uh, we parse uh, syslog uh, messages looking for keywords sort of, and we do call flashing of uh, customers that are calling into us and the sort of fancy telephone number pops up on the screen if it's working uh, and we can see also which institution is calling. Uh, much of it is sort of playing around uh, with the tools that we have already developed uh, to see what view gives us the best sort of uh, view of what, what to react to first, what's the most pressing. We keep uh, a multicast matrix that shows if, if one part of our network uh, drops off the multicast uh, enabled. Uh, yes. I was asking this question because uh, these are uh, different approaches that uh, turn mm -hmm. uh, on the, on the uh, operation because we found that uh, the operators were not too much concentrating on what is on the wall, but they were they had already in their own computer. Yeah, uh, and it's the same. It's, it's much the same with us. You you sort of have perhaps much of the same information at your desk and at the displays. Uh, the difference is that uh, you should be able to get uh, an early warning because you don't. You don't. You do other things at the NOC than just sit and stare at, at the relative uh, at the, the tools that you are supposed to look at. So, but in practice, <coughs> perhaps we should have some sort of caution of sound or some alert, alert, <laughs> in order to be quicker to to catch it on the big on the screen. Okay. Thanks so much.